Hello my soccer universe. As you know, revenge is a dish that is best served ice cold. And that's what Real Madrid did yesterday to Barcelona being ice cold in eliminating them. Somewhat surprisingly in the uh, Copa del Rey semi-final with a thumping 4-0 win at home. It's the second kind of surprising 4-0 where the clear league leaders are being embarrassed at home 4-0 that we have seen this week after Milan's destruction of Napoli, Real Madrid does it to Barcelona. I gotta say though, um, Milan's was overall more convincing because for an entire half, it didn't look like that result is in the cards. But uh, we have a little bit more to talk in uh, La Liga as well. We have to, of course, talk about uh, Sevilla, the team that I'm wearing, getting a very big win in an Andalusian derby to kind of get themselves out of relegation trouble, which tells you where Sevilla currently is. But new coach Mendy Bar is, you know, kind of making it a little bit more simple, a little bit more effective. And maybe this is exactly what Sevilla need at this point. Maybe they will stay in, although there's another big team in Valencia that is seriously really relegation threatened. And that, that is something I wouldn't have guessed. Um, close to Valencia is also Villarreal, a team that is making a quite a big come come comeback after um, uh, beating Real Sociedad. So Real Sociedad, who looked a few weeks ago like a shoe in into the final Champions League spot or even get, getting a third, a third place now they uh, really have to fight and it will be the typically uh, you know I think it will be a three race between Villarreal and Real Sociedad and Real Betis and Villarreal look really 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 good at that moment as good as also does Atletico Madrid uh, who more or less have sewn up the Champions League spot, which also is kind of so surprising given where they were at the beginning of the season but ever since Joao Felix uh, left they're looking quite good. Over in Portugal, it's same old, same old. Uh, I think we know now the top three, which are the teams that are here. Sporting probably will not make it into any Champions League contention, which is probably a little bit of an upset. Uh, and I actually want to start uh, this review in Portugal. I mean, it's not much that I can tell you. I mean, all the big uh, teams got wins, Sporting a 3 0 over Santa Clara. Braga a 2-1 over Chavez, uh, Benfica beat Rio Ave, and Porto a uh, kind of uh, easy win, just 1-0 over Portimonense, but you know in the end they get the result, but it all boils down to what will happen uh, the upcoming weekend. Uh, yesterday evening, Gilles Vicente Sporting 0-0, this was a, uh, Sporting needed that win. They had one to have any chance of making into the championship to close the gap on Braga a little bit. Uh, now, if we look at, at the standing, the gap is five points. It could have been three. It is really, really hard to see uh, Sporting make it into the top three, meaning they go in the qualification of the top two, of course, qualify for the Champions League directly, with Benfica being more or less a shoe in for the title. So, uh, with that. 10 point cushion, eight rounds to go. It's really hard to not see Benfica getting uh, that title, um, which they, of course, get. Uh, it's very much set. I mean, even the expected stances, I think we don't see much changes there. Uh, Benfica actually might seal the title already tomorrow in the clash against uh, Porto. If they win that one, I think. It's 13 points with seven rounds to go. This is a very, very, very comfortable lead then. Uh, kind of a little bit of a, a dif uh, difficult games coming up for um, uh, Sporting at Casa Pia on Sunday. Braga have to play against the relegation of threat in the Sturil. So I honestly, I see the gap more widening than closing. Uh, let's look over the past La Liga weekend. Uh, Girona, 2-1 over Espanyol, seeing uh, a coach getting fired, which was kind of for, for es Espanyol, which I heard Espanyol had in uh, 23 years, 23 coaches or something like that. It does not speak for stability. Athletic Club were uh, concentrating on the Copa del Rey final. That's why on the 0-0 at Getafe, I already said Sevilla getting a 2-0 win 
Lucas Ocampos and Nesiri scoring and you know those are the two faces that you at the moment would actually associate with Sevilla and uh, they need to step it up. Um, I this moment I actually think that Sevilla probably will be safe. Uh, Barcelona go to last place Elche and of course get a win. It was just how high. Well Lewandowski opens the scoring then Ansu Fati scores after his uh, father kind of demanded playing time for him. Uh, Lewandowski uh, gets a second and then Ferran Torres makes it a proper uh, scoreline for Barcelona, the one that, uh, that you would expect from the league leaders. And also, you know, go easy into the Classico with a high feeling having scored four goals. Well, that didn't work out that well. Uh, Real Madrid also, it was very much... For the, Let's be honest, there's nothing to play in the league for anymore for Real Madrid. They will not close the gap. Uh, and it's just... So, uh, playing against Real Madrid is basically about entertaining, uh, maybe build up some confidence for the, the Cup uh, competitions, which of course is the Copa del Rey and the Champions League. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, a game that probably was, uh, was rather boring. Rodrigo scores and then a ha uh, first half hat trick for by ben Benzema. Uh, again, Rodrigo Vinicius Jr., Benzema, uh, all combining there. Even El Nazar came on and he got an assist on the last goal for, for Lucas Vasquez, Asensio also scoring. Uh, so it was rather, rather emphatic um, for Real Madrid. And then we had two huge games in the, in the races for the Champions League. Uh, as I already said, Villarreal get a 2-0 win over uh, Real Sociedad side that are uh, a little bit going sideways. I, I have to say, I'm not saying they're, they're really bad, but they're not really pick, 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 picking up results. Whereas Villarreal have now won four out of the last five, uh, picking up points rather, rather fast and closing in. That 2-0, uh, the goals came late through Parejo penalty and then uh, Jackson scoring, <laughs> then being sent off in stoppage time for a second ye ye yellow card. Both teams hitting the wood, woodwork in the place. It was, you know, up and down affair as you would expect from them, but Villarreal just the tad better. And then it was not a great game between Atletico Madrid and Real Betis. However, the winning goal is worth your time uh, by Correa. What a street goal it is, just... Uh, dancing through the defense, but also, you know, some, so sometimes the bounces go uh, go right. He pulls, pulls, pulls it in. And again, uh, Real Betis is another team that does not have the greatest of forms as, as, as of late. Another team that we thought maybe that can break into the top four. It's now Atletico Madrid, who more or less, you know, with four wins in, in a row and playing really well at times that look like the team going in. And then... Uh, Valencia just save a 1-1 uh, a draw uh, against Rayo at, at, at home. But as we see in the standings, they are seriously relegation threat. I mean, moving out of relegations on Espanyol going in there. There are quite some big names in there. Rayo Valladolid is probably the team that one is most worried about. But Cadiz could also fall in there. I think we all know Elche is gone. Can Almeria get out? We have to, have to see up top. As I said, Real Madrid are not going to claw back the 12 points difference uh, against Barcelona. Atletico more or less in the Champions League and then it's a three-way race for the last spot with Real Sociedad just holding the advantage still, but it is a rather, rather tight one. So um, not looking good. I think... I actually think that Villarreal have a, a true chance there and they're really turning around their season at the moment. Uh, expected Villarreal is just behind, but you know, uh, as I said, my feeling is that the other two are trending in the other direction. That is the that is the gut feeling of Villarreal at the moment have it. Uh, good, but I would love it if either one of the two teams, uh, Sociedad or Betis, make it into the top four. It would be overall, over the course of the season, well deserved. If we look now at the relegation for the teams, we already said it, uh, Valladolid, Almeria, and LJ Kerr currently are the ones that are scheduled to go down, but it is, it's a tightish race. We'll finish it in the Copa del Rey. 
Osasuna is in the final. However, that was was a game uh, that for me was more about the missed chances of Athletic Club in the f uh, uh, due to during the game, especially the Williams brothers were combining. I mean, uh, Inyaki gets the go ahead goal, but then Nico at one point needs to make it two to two nil, and then that will see it out. However, it does go to overtime. And Nervi tied, and then Ibanez scores an equalizer that sends Osasuna to their only second ever Copa del Rey final. And while on paper this is not a Basque Derby, you know, it seems like when I look at, at the two, it's nothing special. But Athletic Club against Os Osasuna, that is in a way very, very much a Derby because Navarra is also kind of um, a part of the greater Basque region. So that was actually quite atmospheric and, and especially when uh, the Sun no Mess is always great. Uh, and then the Classico, the last one of the season uh, and, Ram, uh, and, Bar and you know with a month in, in between I'm not so I still don't get it you know you should you should try to get it a little bit closer to, to, to together especially La Liga and the uh, Football Federation can make uh, it in, su in such a way, but okay. In any case, Barcelona held the advantage from the first leg, a rather tight and boring one. Um, and this time around, they were actually largely a better, better team. They had a penalty shout uh, in the 16th minute where Alaba falls down in, in the box after uh, Gavi passes in, in the box and hits his arm. Since he's falling down, I think it's just about, about okay, but I've seen this panel this game as well. Of course, lots of uproar and Xavi was booked for that one. And then there comes the big chance just before for they have a great save from Courtois on um, uh, Lewandowski. And from that save, a uh, counterattack is launched by Vinicius Jr. who plays it out to Benzema and you see both Barca defenders go on to Benzema. It opens up big for, Vin for Vinicius Jr. who gets the ball. Doesn't really hit it actually well. I mean, uh, Kunde is trying to save it on the line. But over the line, line goes on to make sure Benzema put, puts it in, in as well. So the score is level with the first real chance for Real Madrid. Really, really, really effective, one has to say. And then in the second half, Benzema in the 50th makes it 2-0. And that broke Barca. And then Barca fell completely apart. Uh, I cannot say it in any way different than Cassie gives away a penalty in the 50th minutes. It's 3 0 for Madrid, and it could have gone worse. I mean, uh, 77th and 770th, uh, Real Madrid had two big chances. I mean, how Benzema missed that, uh, that one, however, in the 80th. He gets another pure hat trick, as we say in the German speaking world. This time it's a second half hat trick, uh, and it's a proper route. And what I'm wondering now is Real Madrid can let La Liga go. Just try out a few things. You have the Champions League sewn up, you will not become champion champion. So all their focus will be now on the winning the Cop 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 Del Rey and of course on the Champions League itself, where Facing a Chelsea team in disarray looks rather good. So you probably are looking at a semi-final against one of the big boys where with the experience that Real Madrid have, you wouldn't put it beyond them to make it. Uh, I want to give you the next few rounds I have to say in uh, La Liga. Yes, Real Madrid via Real sticks out a little bit. There's also a Catalan Derby. And a Madrid derby in there with Rayo Atletico and Barcelona Girona late, but uh, not really any outstanding fi fi fixture. And then the week after, it's the <laughs> relegation classic with Valencia and Sevilla. That I think is the biggest game there. No, it's not. That's the Basque derby, which is always a very atmospheric fixture. Well worth your time, I would say. Well, that was it from me. As I said, the big one was, of course, the Classico uh, there. Again, I have the feeling that the Classico is a little bit losing its luster. Uh, it's not the great rivalry that it was maybe 10 years ago or so. But in any case, it's always a fixture that uh, grabs the headlines. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon with more stuff from Liga and other places. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!